Forget everything you thought you knew about fighter pilot training. Canada isn't just buying new jets, they're forging a revolution in pilot skills. We're talking about a complete overhaul, where pilots are no longer just flying, but actively exploiting the Gripen's combat advantage through an unprecedented level of cockpit integration. In a world where air combat is increasingly digital, Canada is leading the charge, preparing its pilots for the conflicts of tomorrow, today. Step inside the Gripen EF's advanced cockpit and witness how augmented reality, digital interfaces, and integrated sensor fusion are creating a new breed of pilot. This isn't just training, it's the future of air superiority. Imagine flying a fighter jet where you're not just controlling the aircraft, you're thinking with it. That's the shift introduced by the Gripen EF. Its cockpit is built around information dominance, not old analog habits. Traditional gauges are gone, replaced by large touchscreens and multifunctional displays that merge speed, altitude, threats, weapons, and navigation into one clear digital picture. Nothing feels cluttered, nothing feels hidden. The system doesn't just display data, it prioritizes it. This is the Gripen's smart cockpit. Using AI-assisted logic, the aircraft monitors mission conditions and pilot workload, pushing critical information forward while fading out distractions. In high-stress combat, clarity replaces overload. Think of it as a silent co-pilot, always filtering chaos into focus. This changes how pilots fight. Instead of reacting to threats, Gripen pilots act proactively, guided by predictive alerts and fused sensor data. The aircraft shows where danger is developing, not just where it already exists. The pilot isn't just flying anymore, they're managing the battle space. For Canada's future pilots, this isn't just a cockpit upgrade, it's a new mindset, a quiet revolution, powered by code and glass. This is the moment where the Gripen stops feeling like an aircraft and starts feeling like an extension of the pilot's senses. At the center of this shift is the head-mounted display, or HMD. This isn't a basic helmet with symbols. It's a true augmented reality combat system that places the battlefield directly in the pilot's view. Flight data, targets, threats, and sensor tracks appear in the sky itself. No looking down, no searching screens. The outside world becomes the display. Older fighter jets forced pilots to constantly shift focus, eyes down to instruments, then back outside. Every glance away carried risk. The Gripen removes that friction. With eyes out combat, critical information follows the pilot's head movement. Look at a target, and the aircraft understands your intent. Pilot and jet operate inside a shared perception loop. Situational awareness doesn't just improve, it expands. In complex scenarios with multiple contacts and electronic interference, threats are no longer abstract symbols. They're projected directly into real space, making target acquisition faster and threat recognition immediate. For training, especially in Canada, this is a major shift. Pilots no longer waste time fusing data. The aircraft does that work, allowing pilots to focus on judgment and tactics. Once pilots adapt to this augmented vision, there's no going back. This isn't science fiction. It's modern air combat, clearly seen. Here's the uncomfortable truth about modern air combat. The pilot who sees first doesn't just win, they control the fight. And this is where the Gripen EF quietly becomes far more dangerous than it looks on paper. At the heart of that danger is sensor fusion, a concept that sounds technical, but in practice feels almost unfair. The Gripen isn't relying on a single sensor to understand the battle space. It pulls data simultaneously from its ASA radar, infrared search and track, IRST system, and a highly sophisticated electronic warfare suite. Each of these sensors sees the world differently. Radar detects range and movement. IRST sees heat signatures. EW systems listen, classify, and locate emissions. Individually, they provide fragments. Together, they form certainty. The Gripen's onboard systems automatically fuse these inputs into a single, unified tactical picture. The pilot is not forced to cross-check radar blips with infrared tracks or manually correlate electronic signals. The aircraft does that cognitive labor instantly and continuously. 
what appears on the pilot's displays and inside the helmet is not raw data, it's interpreted reality. This becomes critically important when facing stealth aircraft and electronic jamming. Stealth is not invisibility, it's deception. Jamming is not silence, it's noise. Sensor fusion cuts through both. If radar returns are weak or distorted, infrared data fills the gap. If heat signatures are masked, electronic emissions provide location clues. The Gripen doesn't panic when one sense is confused, it simply leans on the others. This layered perception makes it exceptionally resilient in contested environments. In practical terms, this means an adversary has to defeat multiple sensing methods at once. That's exponentially harder and often impossible. Now, technology alone doesn't win wars. People do. This is where Canadian pilot training becomes crucial. Pilots are trained not to question whether the data is reliable, but to exploit its confidence. Instead of spending mental energy verifying information, they are taught to focus on strategy, positioning, timing, escalation control, and cooperative tactics with allied forces. Training shifts away from what am I seeing toward what should I do now. Canadian pilots learn to treat the fused tactical picture as a shared language, one that can be instantly communicated across aircraft, ground stations, and command networks. Decision-making becomes faster, calmer, and more deliberate, even in chaotic combat scenarios. This is why sensor fusion is a combat multiplier, not a feature. It doesn't just improve awareness, it compresses the enemy's options while expanding your own. And once pilots internalize this way of fighting, air combat stops being a reaction game. It becomes control theory at mock speed. Here's the part most people underestimate. You can buy the most advanced fighter jet in the world, but if you train pilots the old way, you've already lost half the advantage. Canada seems to understand this very clearly. Grip and pilot training doesn't begin in the sky anymore. It begins inside next-generation simulation facilities that go far beyond traditional flight simulators. These aren't just replicas of cockpit controls or basic flight physics. They are full-spectrum decision environments designed to stress the pilot's mind, not just their hands. Every switch, display, and system behaves exactly as it would in the real aircraft. But more importantly, the context is real. Airspace congestion, rules of engagement, electronic interference, multi-domain coordination. The pilot is trained to think inside complexity from day one. Then comes the leap that truly changes everything, immersive virtual reality. These VR environments don't just simulate combat, they recreate uncertainty. Weather shifts unexpectedly. Sensors fail partially, not completely. Friendly and hostile forces overlap. Information arrives incomplete or deliberately misleading. Pilots are forced to operate inside ambiguity, exactly like real combat. This is not muscle memory training. This is judgment conditioning. But the most disruptive element is what Canada puts inside these simulations. Advanced AI-driven adversaries. These are not scripted enemies flying predictable patterns. These AI systems learn, adapt, and exploit pilot behavior. If a pilot develops a habit, the AI notices. If a tactic works once, the AI counters it the next time. The result is a training environment that refuses to be mastered. This is known as human-in-the-loop training. The pilot is never passively observing. Every decision shapes the scenario in real time. Every mistake has consequences. Every success creates new pressure. Pilots are pushed to their cognitive limits, intentionally. Why? Because real combat does not forgive overload. Canada's training philosophy accepts discomfort early to prevent catastrophe later. Stress is not avoided, it is engineered. Over time, pilots stop relying on checklists and start relying on adaptive reasoning. They learn when to trust automation and when to override it. They learn how to fight while systems degrade, teammates fall back, or data becomes unreliable. This is where grip and pilots are truly made, not in the aircraft, but in the moments when the simulation feels uncomfortably real. And by the time they reach the actual cockpit, something critical has already happened. The chaos feels familiar. This is where everything comes together. The Gripen EF isn't preparing Canadian pilots for the next air battle. It's preparing them for a new type of war. Modern air combat no longer exists in isolation. It's multi-domain by default, air, 
land, sea, cyber, and space, all feeding into the same decision loop. Canada's advanced grip and training pipeline is built precisely for this reality. Pilots are trained to operate as nodes inside a larger network, not as lone warriors chasing targets. They learn how air power supports naval operations, how electronic warfare shapes ground maneuvering, and how data superiority can neutralize kinetic force before weapons are even fired. The cockpit becomes a command center, not just a control room. This demands a fundamentally different skill set. The modern fighter pilot is no longer defined by stick and rudder mastery alone. Those skills still matter, but they are no longer the differentiator. Today's grip and pilot must be an information manager, capable of filtering fused sensor data, prioritizing threats, coordinating with allies, and making time-critical decisions under extreme pressure. In effect, the pilot becomes a tactical orchestrator, directing systems, assets, and information flows rather than reacting to them. Judgment, adaptability, and systems thinking now sit at the top of the skill hierarchy. Canada's training philosophy reflects this shift. It doesn't attempt to simplify the battlefield for pilots. It trains them to dominate complexity. Automation is embraced, but never blindly. Pilots are taught where automation excels and where human intuition remains irreplaceable. The strategic implications of this approach are significant. By investing in the Gripen EF alongside revolutionary training methodologies, Canada isn't just acquiring a fighter jet, it's building a future-ready air force, one that can adapt faster than adversaries, integrate seamlessly with allies, and operate effectively in contested, data-saturated environments. This kind of investment signals intent. It says that Canada understands modern deterrence is no longer about numbers alone. It's about decision superiority, the ability to observe, orient, decide, and act faster and more accurately than anyone else in the sky. And in that equation, the Gripen isn't just an aircraft, it's a philosophy. A philosophy where technology empowers humans, training sharpens judgment, and air combat becomes less about brute force and more about control. That is the future Canada is preparing for.